All right, I am back. It's been a while. Been at a lot of events, been a lot of traveling. I've actually wanted to do this video for some time, um, but just for the travel, haven't been able to knock it out. But uh, here we are. We're going to get it going. Assists, uh, I want to talk about them today because statistics and Counter-Strike in general right now is actually a big problem. Um, but I think assists uh, are one of the you know most currently underutilized and, and kind of useless statistics that we currently track. Um, at the moment, assists are given out when a player does 41 points of damage or more uh, without getting the kill. Uh, it has to do with any damage from, from whether it's a rifle, the pistols, any, any of the weapons, any of the nades, any damage that's used combined. 41 damage uh, or more gives that assist. Um, and this should, when you think about assists and how they're tracked with other games, it should be able to provide some kind of context, some kind of... Um, way to quantify, you know, a supportive role. Obviously, just the definition of assist implies that. Um, but it, it doesn't really give us give us any of that at the moment. In fact, I, I struggle at times. It's always really interesting to me that I can never think of, you know, a good level of assist for a player to have in a match. You, you know, you always say, you know, if this player reaches, like, he, he's averaging, like, 20 kills per match. If he gets up to, like, 25, that's a really good game out of him. Assists, it's like, yeah, one game he might have three, one game he might have eight. Even if he gets up towards 12, do we really notice that he's getting 12? I, I think the only time we've ever highlighted assists, in fact, are when Smith's had that game... Uh, I want to say it was around a month ago where he uh, he got the record of assists in, in one match. Um, but, if, you know, for if you look at like an NBA, if you're an NBA fan, if you look at an NBA stat sheet after one of their games, you can kind of piece together a little bit of the story based off how many assists someone has. Like, just as an example, um, if I see, you know, a center or a big man who has, you know, a good amount of assists throughout a game, you know, I can kind of infer, I can kind of assume that, you know, the pick and roll game was was really strong. He worked really well with his guards to have that pick and roll set up. Maybe he's just one of those big men who he was he attracted a lot of double teams, uh, which leaves a teammate open, so he's able to kick a pass out to an open guard uh, to sink a shot. So you can kind of piece together this story of, of why this the center might have had, you know, what kind of an impact did he have? You know, when it comes to assists and Counter Strike, it's so hard to do that because I imagine, I mean, if you sit down, if I were to sit down with a pro player and record us just going over his entire POV from one of the matches he played in, more often than not, when we get if we we highlight all the assists he got if we just skip to those moments in time um i, I imagine most pro players are going to be like yeah i missed that kill uh yeah i should have had that one as well um and so assist essentially is tracking you know these these failed kills more often than not or these kills that someone feels like they should have have it's not you know it's not this positive statistic in, in a sense um you know, you, you look at it and you're like, okay, he's got five assists, but man, he only has like two kills. He just can't finish off these kills. What might it be? You know, assists should be something that is positive, that these players take pride. You know, you want to have that player who's like, yeah, I'm the shit. I have the most assists average per game. You know, I have that I have that record. Smiths might be proud about that. Um, but but you want them to, to be actively searching out ways to find assists. Um, I mean, even if like, even if you go, and I went and checked out, even if you go to HLTV and you go to their best player of 2015 series, um, which which overall I think is a pretty is a really cool series but if you go in and read why they talk about all these players um, statistically assists are often ignored uh, in fact they're lumped together as kind of like a kill slash assist per death statistic but no one ever you know they don't ever say oh this player was these players were nearly identical and all these different statistics but that assist this guy just crushes them so that's what's putting him ahead there, there's no talk of those assists as having any any impact on on a player's ranking in that system and that that was kind of confusing to me in fact even if you go to a an individual stat page on HLTV it doesn't actually track assists it just tracks um average assists per round uh, and I'm not saying that's the fault of HLTV but I just think we're using this statistic so incorrectly there's so much more that this can provide us that we're not we're not using it from whether it's HLTV whether it's you know ESL Pro League you know there's so many different ways that we can utilize this statistic to actually get meaningful information um, and I just was actually kind of curious um, to just check this out, I mean, these are just some, these are some of the top players in the world. Um, Olaf Meister, 0.15 average assist per round. Device, 0.15 average assist per round. Get right, 0.14 average assist per round. Snacks, 0.15 average assist per round. And these are players who are, you know, the carries. Those are all, those are all from 2015, by the way, the entire year of 2015. And these are all like, you know, the carry players, um, you know, the stars of their team, so to speak, and everything like that. So then I wanted to go next, I went to the three, you know, the people we consider to be the prototype, you know, the, the, um, 
whenever we talk about support players, these are the three guys who usually come up. It's Crims, it's Zipnix, and it's MBK. Um, Crims has 0.17 assists per round. Uh, Zipnix has 0.17 average assists per round. NBK has 0.16 average assists per round. So we go from these stars who are at, you know, right around 0.15, and then we go to the players who are the supports. These are the guys that we say this, this is what, you know, these are the guys that should, you know, technically by definition have the assists. And there's no jump. There's no jump in any of this. So, I mean, we can we can use this statistic to actually quantify the impact that, a, that supportive players are have um, on a match. And it's not being done. And there's really no variation between individual players. So it's not helping us, you know, determine the levels of individual players. It's not helping us determine the level or, or the impact of, you know, a star player versus a support player. It's not giving us anything. Well, you know, I, it's just so frustrating at times to look at this statistic. Um, you know, and it even gets more convoluted because actually I don't know if many people know this, but in CSGO, um, you're given the assist and the kill feed by that 41 points of damage that I mentioned earlier. Actually, in Pro League, um, their website only tracks assists if you get 51 points of damage. So you might see an assist in the kill feed, but if you go check after the match, it's not tracked unless you get you know that extra that extra 10 damage. So it gets even a little bit more confusing, a little bit more convoluted, uh, depending on where you go. HLTV does track their assist through the CSGO version, so you only need 41 points of damage to get an assist on the HLV tr HLTV tracking. Um, but I just think, you know, with the way that this has gone, with the way that the current Counter-Strike climate, with the growth that we're having, um, this isn't good enough out of a statistic, the, the assist statistic. It's just not good enough, and it's not acceptable anymore. Um, this is a stat we should be using. We should be able to highlight why is this player such a good support? Why is this such a good support player? Why, you know, what's the impact? We should be able to give you a number when we're on the desk, but we can't. We're always, you know, talking. We always have to, like, paint this picture of why these supportive plays are so good, and we always have to make a you know, make an effort to point out those support plays because it's the only attention they get. They have no, they have no attention to the statistics. And we know, you know, when you go to forums, this is one of the big things about support players is people always say, oh my God, like this player only has, you know, 10 kills for these past five matches. You know, he sucks, get him out of there. And then the other people are like, well, he's the support player. He's not supposed to have those kills, but that that's just not a good enough argument. We, we, we should be making stats for these support players so that we can actually have an intelligent discussion about what makes him a good support player. You know, that, that argument that he yeah he just throws flashes for his teammates so his teammates can get kills that's why he doesn't have any yeah that might be true but how do we know that we have to actually be able to quantify that and and i just think you know going back this is a thought that struck me when we were in cluj at the last major in romania if we can have it if we can hook into the counter-strike api and have lights on a stage that blink in time with the bomb ticks we should be able to go in and find ways to measure st uh, the assist uh, statistic a little bit more uh, in depth and, and much better so um this is kind of the idea i had to, to fix that a little bit was you keep the you keep the assist um overall and you kind of make it its own statistic bar and you have like kind of five sub assists like five of five kind of a, five types of assists underneath that that general number um which will all be added up to give their assist for a, over a whole match but you know you can do something like you have damage assist which is essentially the same as it currently is uh except it's only weapon damage doesn't keep uh doesn't track the nade damage when when you when counting those damage assists and then you know Logically, after that, you have the nade assist, where dealing 41 or 51 combined damage with only Molotovs and HE grenades. So then you can start to measure how good a player is at using his grenades. Um, you know, how good is he at using his Molotovs? Is, are his Molotovs dealing damage? Or is he using them to stall out for time? Or is he using them to actually force somebody to run through them and do that damage? You could start measuring how good they are with their nades. Uh, blind assist. Uh, you know, if a player dies within three seconds of being at least 50% flashed, the thrower of that flashbang gets the assist. That's where you can start to track how good is this player you know when his teammate says oh they're wrapping on a they're wrapping on a and he throws a pop flash for his teammate that that measures how good he is at that how effective are his flashbangs overall um you know is he able to assist his teammate in that way uh you can do something like a bait assist where taking damage kind of like what valve currently does i mean it needs to be implemented a little bit better when they have the um so and so saved you know player x saved player Y by getting this kill, where, you know, a bait assist would be taking damage from an opponent that is killed by a teammate during that fight. That gives you an assist, uh, the, the player who takes the damage, it, and that would help you measure, you know, maybe you have like a bait and switch set up. Maybe you're trying to bait them into your teammate. Uh, it'll, it'll also measure how good crossfires are set up by a team. And even beyond that, even beyond those measuring an individual player, if we can start to take these statistics and then you can start to extrapolate them and, and monitor those statistics on a team as a whole, all of a sudden you have whole new ways of, of measuring 
the strengths, the weaknesses of a team, things they can improve on, things they need to work on, um, things that make them effective. Like if we can say, okay, so I mean, this would take some time to measure it, to have this system in place, to kind of get an idea of what's the norm and what's like a really good game in terms of some of these. But if you could say, all right, well, Fnatic deals, you know, each round they deal like 86 damage with their nades. That's sick. It almost gives them a kill with just their nade usage. Uh, and then uh, conversely, if you go and you say, all right, Fnatic's only dealing like 30%, uh, 30, 30 damage per round uh, with their nades, all of a sudden you're saying, all right, that's pretty weak. They need to work on that. Or maybe it doesn't matter because they just take a lot of aim duels. You can start to measure, you know, if a team's not getting a lot of flashbang, uh, like blind assists, if they're not getting a lot of kills using flashbangs, then you start to know they're just trying to take these, these flat out aim duels. They're just being 50 50 gambling. They're not utilizing their teamwork properly. This is a way where then we get coaches involved who could say, all right, we, you know, we only got, you know, four blind assists this game. I want that number up by 10 by the end of the week. Let's work on that. Make sure in practice all week you guys are focusing on flashing for your teammates of, of helping them get these kills. Um, you know, you can, you can look at nades and you can say, all right, we're using nades wastefully. We're, we're throwing nades here that it's not doing any damage. Make sure we're coordinating our nades on these certain choke points. These are where like the most, most of the damage is done. Um, so there's so many options with this assist, assist statistic. I've said that so many times in this video. Um, that can help us and can help teams and can help analysts and can help casters. And it could just bring up the scene in general. It gives us a whole new avenue of conversation that we're not able to have because we're not quantifying any of this data. Um, and actually, uh, I'll put it in the comment of this video. Actually, Lurpus did a really good ar uh, article. I believe it was last year or was it, it might've been two years ago where he had a, he had a list. Uh, I wrote it on HLTV, but I'll put the link in the comments of um, statistics that are not currently tracked that we could track. And some of them are like actually really, really good. Some of them I think would be hard to do and might not be able to implement, but I, I think there's a lot of them in there that are really good um, that, that would actually help out the Counter-Strike scene if we're able to track some of these. But I mean, these are just these are just four ideas for assists. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty more that people can think of. Some of the numbers might have to be tweaked, um, but you know, if we start adding this into the game, you know, we no longer have to just come out and defend someone blindly by saying he's a support player. Trust me, he's he's doing the role and then like try and actively search out rounds. We can start actually looking at the statistics and say, yeah, he's only got 10 kills, but the guy's got 15 blind blind assists in this best of three or he's got you know he's been dealing 60 da 60 damage per round in nades we, we start knowing a little bit more um what his role we can kind of define it through statistics and that helps so much in the conversation um you know even just casual conversation on forums but gives us things to talk about on the desk um and i just think that would be huge these are crucial elements of counter-strike this is what makes counter-strike such a great game is things such as as this as the flashbangs as your utility usage and how you use it in a team and this is what gives teams an advantage over other teams Teams who do this are so much better than teams that do this, and we can actually attach numbers to that. And I think it's so important moving forward, especially if we're going to start being on TV, we need to be able to have these things that we can put up on stream that we can actually show people. Um, and I think that's a conversation we need to have because it's, it's no longer... It's no longer acceptable that we have all these capabilities and we're ignoring statistics in general, but assists overall, I think, are just really, really underwhelming. Um, so, I mean, that's one main area this year that, that leagues need to work on. And I mean, yeah, it's even ridiculous that, that we don't even have a standardized set of assists throughout the whole whole industry. I mean, Pro League going 51 HP, CSGO doing 41 HP. I don't care which one is used, but it needs to get uniformed um, between between everyone tracking assists because that is just crazy that assist means one thing here and another thing here. Depending on which site you look at, your st statistics are going to be completely different. Um, so that, that's an area we definitely need to improve in, but assists, in my opinion, are the big one.